In this video, we're gonna look at how to use the Secret Pro features to turn the ATEM Mini into a professional broadcast tool. The ATEM Mini is a super affordable four input switcher. Blackmagic is clearly going after the creator market with it rather than their normal professional broadcast market. Just take a look at their marketing images for the Mini compared to the next model up. But the amazing part and why I think everybody should buy this, including professionals, is that this device is actually a lot more powerful than it looks like on the outside. Out of the box, it's set up to be really easy to use for people who are brand new to the whole concept of switchers. The default mode is that the input buttons actually cut immediately to the camera that is selected, which is great when you're getting up and running. And by default, both the HDMI out and the USB-C show program output. This works great for people who are just getting started with gear like this, but if you are a more seasoned professional used to using the higher end models of ATEM switchers, then this seems like kind of a toy. So we're gonna walk through a couple of settings you can change to make this work more like the high-end switchers and really get the most out of this tool. Quick note, this video is not sponsored. I really just am a huge fan of this thing and I am super excited to talk about it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is to change this into preview program mode instead of the cut bus mode. The confusing part is that this is not something you do through the regular software control interface. You actually have to do it through a separate application. So go launch the ATEM setup tool and make sure this is plugged in via USB because it doesn't let you control this over the network. Go ahead and click the little icon and that will open up the settings. Go down to switching mode and choose program preview instead of cut bus. Hit save and now it's ready. Now you'll notice when you hit one of the buttons, it turns green indicating that that input is in preview and you actually have to press auto or cut to show that camera in the program feed. Next, you're gonna wanna change your HDMI out to actually be the preview instead of the program. That's gonna let you do things like preview the angle before cutting to it and also preview your key effects and transitions. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to be in the ATEM software control app. Up at the top, there's a menu called output. Click that, scroll down and choose preview. Now you'll notice that your HDMI output is no longer showing the program feed. It's actually showing the preview of the camera that's about to be cut to. So at this point, things should now already feel a lot more familiar if you're used to the higher end ATEM switchers. And this is where it starts getting useful. So now you can do things like preview your key effects before pushing them live, or even preview your transitions. Toggle this preview transition button on, and then when you press auto, it keeps what's on program out, but you'll see the transition happen anyway on the preview. Okay, next up, you're probably gonna wanna configure the output format to your particular needs. Go down to this little gear button in the corner, and then you can change the video standard to different frame rates. It is limited to just 1080 resolution. There's no downscaling to 720p. It also doesn't support 4K at all. And you can only choose progressive, not interlaced. But it does give you a wide range of frame rates between 23.98 and 60. While we're in the settings tab here, go over to the audio tab. There's a couple of really cool features in here. You actually have the ability to split the right and left channels from any of your inputs into separate tracks. That can be really handy if you're doing things like running two microphones into the camera on the right and left channels. You can get it back out into separate audio tracks here that you can mix independently. Once you actually split one of the audio sources here, you'll now see two tracks in the mixer. The other thing you might wanna do here is choose whether your eighth inch inputs are at mic or line level. That way you get the right levels if you're plugging in a microphone like a lav mic or a line out from another mixer. So let's go dive into the audio mixer now. This is actually something that was previously only available on the higher end models and now they're putting it in the mini. You actually now have access to a complete equalizer and dynamics processor built in. This is a huge deal. This is gonna give you way better audio without bringing an external mixer. You can actually go in here and tweak things like the EQ for each channel. You can even add a compressor and the limiter. So you really have a lot of tools available in here. I will say the only downside is that there actually isn't a headphone jack on here. So the only way you can hear what you're doing is by monitoring the output from either the HDMI or the USB-C on here. I do wish they had added the headphone jack because that would have made it even simpler to go and preview what you're doing with your audio adjustments. All right. Next up, let's start digging into the graphics capabilities. Just like in the larger ATEMs, this has a media player and a media pool. It'll let you load up 20 different still images into the media pool and then choose one of them to show in the player. And then that actually lets you use the still button here, which will show the media player as the program app. So click the media tab at the bottom here, and then you can drag and drop files from your computer into the slots. You can also load up Photoshop and create lower thirds or title graphics. And then you can actually push from Photoshop to the media pool directly. This actually makes it really easy to create titles on the fly if you're doing a live event. So once you've got your graphics loaded up in the media pool, you can now drag them into the media player to prepare them. You can use them either as a camera angle, like if you've got a full screen title graphic, or you can actually set the downstream keyer to use the media player as well. 
and that'll do things like let you create lower thirds or little bugs. Make sure your Photoshop files have a transparent background because it'll actually use the alpha channel and you can actually get gradients that way and very clean edges. So there's no physical button to control the downstream keyer, which means you actually need to control it either from the software control panel or from an external control service, which is what we're gonna talk about next. So the physical buttons here are good enough for camera switching. These buttons and the cut and auto buttons will go plenty far for just basic camera switching but most of the rest of these buttons actually control the audio. And you'll probably quickly find the limitations of the physical buttons as soon as you start doing more complicated things like using the keyer or adding title graphics. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is use an external control surface like this one. I'm a big fan of the Stream Deck. So this has these 12 keys, but each of these keys is actually a screen and then it can show text or graphics on here. There's a separate app that you can download called Companion, which is what this uses to talk to the ATEM. I'm not gonna go into a full tutorial on how to use this with the ATEM. I will leave a link to John Barker's tutorial. He did an excellent tutorial on how to get this up and running from nothing, installing the companion app and getting it talking to the ATEM. I will say the one thing that's a little bit unique to this is that even though the ATEM software control panel works over USB, the companion app actually does require a network connection. You need to plug in a network cable between this and your laptop and configure your network as well in order to have that work. So. I'll show you how I've got this set up to control some of the particular aspects that would make this mini very powerful. Let's say, for example, you're doing an event with three speakers. You've got a close-up shot on each speaker, and then you've got a wide shot of the group. What we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna make a button on the stream deck, which will cut to one of the speakers, bring in the title, the lower third title with their name, and then fade it out after five seconds. And that way you get just quick buttons to be able to cut cameras, bring in the titles, and uh, have it automatically fade out after the right amount of time. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into the ATEM software control and record a macro. Then we're gonna create a button on the stream deck to run that macro. Go up here, open the macros window. Recording macros is a little bit finicky because you don't actually get any visual feedback as to the steps that have been recorded already. And you kind of just get one shot to get it right or re-record the whole macro. I will show you a little trick after the end of this though, which will help you debug this a little bit better. So make sure you're on the create tab and then click this plus icon. Give your macro a name like the speaker. So I'll just say Aaron with title. Now click record. And now anything you press in the control interface will be recorded into the macro. So it's important to remember, don't touch anything right now that you don't want to be part of the macro. So first go into the media pool and then drag your lower third for that speaker into the media player. Go back to the switcher tab and now let's set the program out to that speaker's camera, doing it a cut immediately. Now open up the downstream key, choose media player one and media player one key, and then press the on air button for that keyer. So right now you should be looking at your camera with that speaker and the lower third overlaid already. So next, click this little add pause at the top. Enter a number of seconds like five, and that's gonna be how long you want the macro to pause running, which means this is how long your lower third will be visible. Click add pause to confirm. Next, we want the lower third to fade out. So click now auto in the downstream keyer. That's gonna do a fade out of the keyer. And that's it. Now you can stop recording. And now these steps that you've just done are now recorded in the macro. So next we need to create a button on the stream deck to actually run this macro. This is actually a perfect example of where I wish I could actually reassign some of these buttons to other actions like running macros. So Blackmagic, if you're listening, feature request, let me use some of these buttons like the transition durations because I'm never going to be pressing those ever. Let me just reassign these to macro one, two, three, four. I'd be very happy. And so instead we're gonna create a button on the stream deck to actually run this macro. Now I'm gonna assume you've already got companion up and running and got the stream deck connected to it and already loaded the ATEM presets into companion. If you have not done that yet, pause this video, go watch John Barker's video and I'll be waiting here when you come back. I promise I won't go anywhere. All right, welcome back. Now you can go here, click buttons, go over to presets and choose the ATEM. Click this macros button, and now you should see your list of recorded macros, including the title you created earlier. Go ahead and drag that macro into the first button on the stream deck. So this creates a button. When you tap it, it's gonna run the macro. That macro is going to switch the camera, add the lower third, wait five seconds, fade the lower third out. I like to go into the button settings here and change the background color to black rather than the default blue because I don't care about knowing whether or not these macros have already run in the past. While the macro is running, the button will be green, which is kind of cool. It lets you know the lower third is still there and is about to fade out. So if you want to try it out, you can now. Just press this button and you will see the macro play out. Now, of course, you'd then repeat this process to set up similar buttons for each of the three speakers. 
So I mentioned I would show you a trick for debugging your macros. So if you go into the file menu here, click save, it's actually gonna export all of the settings in the ATEM as an XML file. This is also a useful trick if you're managing multiple projects and you wanna save settings differently for each project. Open that XML file in a text editor and scroll to the bottom. There, you're gonna see your macros. This is actually gonna list out in each macro section, it's gonna list out every action you've configured in the macro, like switching cameras or changing what's in the media pool. If you make a small mistake in recording, you can actually go in here, take out the line, change the values, fiddle with it, you know, reorder things as needed, and that's often easier than trying to re-record the macro. So you can do whatever you want in here, change settings, just make sure it's still a valid XML, and then go ahead and save the file, and you can load it back in. So back in the software control, click the file menu, go to restore, and choose your XML file, and that is going to actually now load that state back into the switcher. So some other Stream Deck buttons you might make, loading a particular image into the media player so that you can actually have one button access to all your different titles. And that saves you the trouble of going through the UI drag and drop thing. Really, there's just so much you can do with this. It's really only limited by your imagination. So that's all I've got for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any more questions, and I'll be happy to talk about them in a future video. And if you haven't already watched my last video about this, I'll leave a link to it down below as well. If you're thinking about buying this, I would appreciate if you would use my affiliate link down below. That gives me a small kickback if you buy it off of that link and it doesn't cost you anything. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.